day. So took a break from uh, working on the rear suspension. I am actually just ordered some shock tabs, some bracing plates for the hairpins. I ordered those from Lee, Lee Grant at LG Customs. Or LG Speed and Custom now. That's his uh, YouTube channel and his website. I'll actually go post a link at the end of this video. Because he has a plasma table, quite frankly, for the price, even with the shipping, the amount of time it would take. Because I ordered 12 shock mount tabs, because I may have to move the ones on the front axle and I need eight for back here and then I was gonna make up the reinforcement plates for the wishbones or wishbones I keep saying wishbones for the hairpins that go in here I started making a template I made a template So all I had to do to get Lee to cut them on his plasma table was send him this with the measurements on it, my cardboard template. Because really to get two exactly the same, I'm working with a crappy drill press and an angle grinder. And let me tell you, I made those engine mounts. If I had known, well, he wasn't making stuff yet, and now he makes that style of engine mount as well that took me the better part of a day to make those two things plus a couple other things that I've made here it's just not I don't know I got to get this thing done rolling so I can get on to the better parts so what I did is in the meantime I was poking around with this back panel I'm an electrician by trade I have bent, bent up miles, literally miles and miles of EMT, which is electric metallic tubing, right? Um, but it's galvanized, and I didn't want galvanized. So I went to a metal supplier here, and they had this three quarter inch tubing, which is actually the same size as half inch EMT. The electrical tubing and it's 049 wall so it's thin and all I'm gonna do is lay it in the body line of the back panel you can see it here at the bottom this panel's pretty rough let's see the rest of this body is reinforced with square tubing the previous owner did that did a really nice job I want to stiffen up this back panel it's gonna tie in right here this end, I kind of, I started bending it, and then I realized, oh, I should have left it more of a stub at the end. I can weld a piece, and I gotta bend this back a bit. But all I used to bend it was a, see, one of these. That's from the, my local Home Depot. Oops. Crash, knocked the crap over. But yeah, so I'm just gonna go along. I'm going to tack this, then I'm going to trim it with a zip disc along here so then I can put a weld on this and then it'll be a finished edge. Because this would have been fastened to wood, which would have had provisions for the top material to fasten into it. Actually, this would have been for upholstery, since this is a front half of a touring car, so there wouldn't have been the top material. But it would have been wood and the upholstery and everything else. That's why it's got the screw hole tabs. That's all gonna go, I'm gonna cut the bottom like four inches off of this and just make a piece to fill it.
It's pretty rough, but that's what I got. Let's see more on this side here. Let's see, clean up the straighten this out. Wibbly wobbly. All this to line up. There. The body line up. That's a tube, it'll give it some structure. And then what I'll do is down the back here, I'll run down here. I just got this laying across the top of the body. I got some square tube come down to tie into this piece of tube that runs across the back of the body. Now it'll tie all of the body into one solid structure. And it'll be as solid as the rest of it. And next on the agenda will be framing out this door. Then at that point, probably gonna take it off the body or off the frame again, throw it on the uh, saw horses again, and go at this rust, surface rust, and throw it in primer. So I'm not doing any fancy body work. It's getting primered. And then I've got brush painted. So yeah, the previous owner did this firewall too. It's like a heavier, it's 18 or 16, it's pretty heavy duty. So I added a whole bunch of stiffness to it. I'm just going to get this back panel sorted. Why isn't that? Okay. Progress on the back panel. I trimmed off all that. The edge that had all the holes in it. For attaching the wood. And then I bent up some of that tubing. I ended up cutting it in half. The tubing here. Because when I bent it to the 90s back to back. It actually turned out to be a little on the longer side because I'm having to stretch out the 90s, like open them up a little to kind of fit the curve because it's not a tight 90 like you get with the bender. So a little fudging here and there, but what I've done is I just dressed up the weld with the flap wheel. I'm going. It's pretty lumpy. It's pretty tough because the tubing's thicker than the sheet metal and she's kind of rusty. I did clean it up a bit. Probably should have done more. I'm, it's MIG. And I'm starting on the pipe and pulling the pull up into the sheet metal just so that the heat's in the pipe and we're using the puddle to metal, melt the edge of the metal into that puddle. I don't know. I'm not an expert welder by far, but I'm just trying not to burn up all this uh, crusty hundred year old tin. So, it's sticking, I'm grinding, it's not coming apart. So, if you're not a good welder, be a good grinder. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's what I'm doing. At some point, I had the wire speed too low, too, and that wasn't doing me any favors. It's real tricky to get the wire speed correct on this. It's either too low or too, I have the heat right down low, the lowest setting. So like the voltage right down at the lowest setting. The wire speed oh, it's up a bit because I had it too low before. It's tricky. Uh, two different thicknesses. The tubing slightly thicker than the metal, and the metal is kind of kind of punky too. All the rust, and it's really old. I find really old metal. I don't know. Likes to melt.